so you close out the Colo Center. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my first experience here obviously was awful. Um, I'm playing UTEP and then having three to one fans. But, you know, that was, we didn't play well. Um, and we knew, we knew it would kind of be difficult. Uh, but if you look at what Moody has meant to SMU and what it's like now, this is a small price to pay. And we were fortunate enough to, you know, win some games, games here as well. Um, I, I'm not going to miss the bus ride. Uh, people were great here, but you know, next time I come back here, I want to see a great high school game. <laughs> and hopefully some of these players think about coming to SMU, playing in Moody. So. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Marcus Kennedy coming off the bench, scoring 17 points? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I always, I'm always amazed. He scored the ball. He didn't guard anybody. <laughs> now, he had a better line than some of Barry's guys, but no, he uh, he rebounded and can score inside, got us some big hoops. I've never been in a game, I think we missed 12 out of 13 free throws at one time. I'm pretty close, and we increased our lead, and I don't think I've ever been in a game where I coached like that, that that's happened, so, you know, we did a good job of defending, and especially the second half, second half, we. Did a great job of rebounding the ball. Um, first half, they got 10 offensive rebounds. You know, I think they out-rebounded us by seven, and then we ended up out-rebounding them by 10. So, you know, Marcus was a big part of that. How much, it seems like you guys were, you know, hadn't played in two weeks, but you hadn't. Did you guys just kind of get it together in the second half? Just I, don't, I don't know. Um, you know, the last time we, we had a break like this, you know, this is a little longer than normal because we had the, the um, cancellation with Hofstra. But I remember the, the 10 days testing last year before we went to Rhode Island. We didn't get anything done. And it really showed on the difference in that game. We hung in for 30 minutes. I think it was 44-41, something like that. And then just ran out of gas. I was. I was really worried about this. One, I, I watched him play TCU in a number of other games, and you know, Dan's a great coach. Um, and, you know, the way they control the clock, I was, I was a little bit nervous. And, they, you know, they came out, made some shots early, and then their energy was much greater than ours. But, um, you know, I thought our bench, Sterling, came in and gave us a big lift. Um, you know, we had some real positive play, so we're fortunate to win, and uh, we'll get a real practice tomorrow. We hadn't had the whole team together, so we'll get a real practice tomorrow, and then we got a bear of a game, you know, going to Laramie because this team's well coached. Well, Wyoming at home, you know, they do a great job. When was the last time you you practice full practice? Um, probably about 10, 12 days ago. Um, and then, you know, playing a team like them that changes defenses as readily as they do, you know, kind of got us a little bit out of whack. And then we've been, we've been working on with the guys that were there and we've never had the full complement, you know, trying to get the ball up quick and change the size with them. We did a horrible job of that. We didn't recognize when we had numbers. You know, we really looked disorganized on the break. We didn't handle pressure very well the first half. You know, Ryan had three straight turnovers. But this is a good game for us. And um, we only have one more really, really good game before we get, you know, Cincinnati, Connecticut, and Louisville. How about? How about R.A.D. having power with scheduling? Uh, Keith Frazier, is he okay? And 
you got somebody else in the uh, He's the he's guy. had some problems with his ankles. He's had a number of mild sprains. He missed the Arkansas game. Um, I saw him walking after. He said it was okay, so we'll we'll see. Um, we'll certainly need him. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful he'll he'll be able to play. But that that's the one nice thing. You know, unlike last year, my, my challenge now is to manage minutes. Last year, my challenge was to find guys that could give us some minutes. Nick Russell had a pretty good line. Yeah, he just can't make an open shot. You know, he, this is the game. He had nine assists, two turnovers, eight defensive rebounds. You know, he did a great job. He just And he had all good looks. You know, I got on him about one runner he made took in front of our bench, but he had great shots that he normally makes. But eight defensive boards, nine assists, you know, that was that was a great job. They had three guys who put up almost seventy five percent of their shots. Was that a product of the defense that you all played against them, or did you know that those were gonna be options one, two, and three no matter what happened? Well, Javon, you know, he's he, he as good a player as he was on the court. Um, you know, he can get it to baskets. Um, he got nine rebounds. He does a lot of good things. I watched him. He's he was the leading scorer coming in. Tim, Tim had recruited a little point guard, and you look at his numbers. He he's probably five to one in assists to turnovers and. He made some shots early. Second half, we did a much better job. I think he made an out of bounds jumper, and that was all the second half. Um, but that's you know that's the way they play. They they screen more than Tim mentioned it to me on the bench. They set more screens than all our previous nine or ten. Well, Virginia screened, but other than that, nobody screened like them, and it's it was tough. But they. Uh, they're going to be all right. He's, uh, you know, I, I saw him coach at Akron, and you know he'll do he'll do all right. He'll win some games. You had a six point lead at halftime, and then you outscore him by twenty in the second half. What was the focus of your message at halftime to your team? Well, we didn't. Uh, we we got out hustled. You know, when you you give up ten offensive rebounds and you get beat on the board as badly as we did on an undersized team. It's all effort, and then we had some horrible turnovers. You know, they, we have a numbers on a on a press and charge, and then you know we turn the ball over two consecutive times right after that. And every turnover we seem to have, you know, they turned into a basket. And you, you can't really guard in that situation. The second half, you know, we took good care of the ball, limited them one shot. For the most part, made him shoot outside shots, and uh, that got us a win. <laughs> and I thought Sterling was great. You know, I thought Sterling's energy coming off the bench was huge. And Marcus, you know, got got aggressive inside, and that was, you know, that's that's what he really does. He's hard. He's hard to guard when he gets it down that deep. Anything else? So he went 15 for 32 from the line. How imperative is that? was unbelievable. I'm not the FIFA coach. I got I to find out who, who that guy is. <laughs> no, I, we've been, you know, actually, for the last, well, we've had a hard time now with, with lack of practice, but prior to that, we were shooting free throws every day. The guys were taking a lot of pride in it. Um, I think sometimes one guy misses and then it kind of gets a little contagious. But I think that that's what happened. But when you can go 15 to 32 from the free throw line and increase a lead, you know, you got to. I think I, you got to be happy. We'll, we'll make free throws. All right. Thank you.